The Pink Panther does of course not exist, but neither does Panthers in general. Welcome to Two Thirds Focused. I think all of us are focused today. And surprisingly, I'm Rasmus. And it's way too early to be recording a podcast. No, it's late. It's late in the morning. It's 10 a.m. Yeah, late in the morning. That's, and technically we're about two days late. Yeah, that's right. My fault. Or more-ish. Anyway. And I'm red. Yes. I'm young. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> right, we're still doing a podcast. I, I forget as well. So how, how, how are you doing today? Or this week and all of that? Red, you want to go first? Oh yeah, um, I'm I'm okay. Surprisingly, um, I went to my in-laws last weekend for Easter's, which was fine. Uh, it was pretty enjoyable to see the kid uh, searching for eggs in the garden uh, <laughs> with a turtle chasing him because he has a oh, turtle, turtle over there. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, she, she's the best. So she's called uh, Sheldon. I, yeah. don't know, I don't know why. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's a good but, turtle name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and she's super cute, and she, she's 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 all pretty big and and already quite old. Um, and she is kind of excited at the moment because the neighbors has another turtle, which is a female and is a male, or she's a female and they have a male, well, something like that. I don't know. Um, so they are chasing each other, but there's a, there's a wall between them. So they are going uh, along the wall uh, back and forth just to be next to each other. So that, that's funny. Oh, that's like a Romeo and Julia thing. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Uh, so yeah, the kid was, was searching for eggs. Uh, the turtle was behind. We spent two or three days over there. Um, and that, that was kind of relaxing because it was, for me, a good break from the remodel and the renovation in the apartment. The only downside was that it's a, supposed to be a three-hour drive and it took us more than six hours to go there uh, oh, because... Shit. Everybody was on the road uh, for um, to visit family in southern France for Easter's. So anyway, uh, we came back on Monday and I started uh, putting the floating floors in the apartment just after that. It took me three days to do two, the two bedrooms, so our bedroom and my kids' one. Uh, and my back and my knees were <laughs> just mm. screaming stop the whole time. Uh, but it's done, so I'm happy. I um, was able to take a day off yesterday uh, just to relax a little bit, to start prepping for Maker Central and work on my Jenga block, which I, I still have time. So that that's okay. Um, I the Jenga block. I haven't started. <laughs> you have five days, so you're good. Uh, but yeah, I'm yeah. pretty happy f- how it turned out so far. It's it's a work in progress, but I'm um, I'm happy. We'll see how it ends up being. Uh, oh, and we took the kid to the fair as well. So every year for Easter, there is a big uh, fair in my hometown with all the things that they have in a fair. So, you you know, the cranes where you try to get fluffy stuff and all the crazy machine when you sit and scream for five minutes. Um, so it was kind of fun to see uh, people having fun after um, two years of COVID and the fair being cancelled and, and everything. Mm. Um, and I realized that now, damn, I'm old. I wouldn't go in this machine anymore uh, as I used to be, I, I, as I used to do when I was like 20, 25. It's scary as hell now. <laughs> <laughs> just see people upside down, 30 meters in the air. It's just like, Oh, it's one of those. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Um, so yeah, it was it was just fun, um, and it was yeah, well, a good week. Progress in the in the apartment. Um, I'm almost done uh, with the renovation. What we have planned before we can move in. Um, so yeah, overall, I'm happy. Um, just have to put the things uh, at the bottom of the walls to uh, trim. Trim. 
thank you uh around the the, um, the two bedrooms and the renovation of the floors in the workshop we'd have to wait after mika central because mm. don't have time for that well Technically, I could do it before Mecca Central, but I realized after doing the two bedrooms that I will be missing some flooring. So I yeah. will have, I, I had to order two more uh, pack of seven pieces of floors. And you would be functionally dead during Mecca Central. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. But and all uh, the is flooring by <laughs> seeing the winter or not. <laughs> <laughs> Could do that, that. That's the reason why we are recording late because uh, Wednesday uh, evening, when we were supposed to record this episode, I was just dead. I was uh, I I had spent two days on my knees uh, to just do the flooring, and I well, was just uh, Wednesday exhausted. evening was my fault for postponing. Yeah, so Thursday was yeah. it. So it was my thir- third day uh, spending mm. uh, on my knees. I was just, yeah, toasted. So which, which reminds me, there might be some Patreons right now waiting for us to go live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so sh- should we explain why we're not? Yeah, because I'm a dum dum. No, it's yeah. not your fault. It, it's well, it's it, YouTube. It kind, it kind of is. Um, we tested, or I tested streaming beforehand, which I did a fantastic job, and everything worked out fine. Um, just didn't take an account in that uh, I did it on my um, private channel or the, the Nerd Inventor one. And when I yesterday night just thought, oh, let's just set up everything on the two thirds focused one, I found out that you actually have to apply for it and then it takes 24 hours or 12 hours. I think, no, mm. it, I think it was 24 hours to yeah. um, actually activate and let you stream live. So now I still have that timer, but like, 12 hours running, <laughs> like <laughs> slowly counting down. I'm like, yep, yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> we'll be oh. ready for next time. Yeah, yeah for next exactly. time. Exactly. Yep. So what about you, Jan? How was your week? Uh, pretty good, actually. Uh, there's a lot lot of good things happened. Um, for, for once, after coming back from Barcelona and the weather finally getting better and no rain anymore, I decided to take my bike to work and back because last week was an office week for me. Mm-hmm. So we're back with 50%, like one week at the office and the other week at home office. Mm. So I've been taking my bike to work and back every single nice. day, which is nice and exhausting. And <laughs> at times I went to bed at like 9.30 in the evening. So that <laughs> yeah. I like usually answer the next day <laughs> when stuff <laughs> like, yeah, when you guys chat in the evening. So th- that was really nice. Also, we had some good news at work regarding the issues with delivery times we had. So yeah. they were able to, uh, I don't know how they pulled it off, but we are now back in um, sending out the wares. Nice. So, well, that's good. Yeah, that is that is huge because that's been heavy on pretty much all of us working there. But but is it, is it like crisis averted or crisis not, postponed? Not sure. Crisis averted for now. Okay. The okay. deliveries where well, we have delays because we had a production stop, but it's yeah. not as bad because we were expecting that nothing comes out till like July or we weren't able to ship products mm. till July. And we are now at the beginning of May already sending out wares. So two months earlier. But I don't know for if it's just if they were able to like buy a charge of those ICs or if it's now really the crisis over didn't they're coming in normally. But at mm-hmm. least for now, the delivery times are somewhat back to normal. That's good. That's, That's good. good. That's really normal good. Normal crazy, let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah. And other than that, I'm, I'm crazy excited for Maker Central, of course. So I'm yeah. now getting more and more excited by the day, a little bit more stressed because my Jenga block is still not ready. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> what else is new, right? <laughs> Well, uh, I, I, the, the reason we postponed from Wednesday to Thursday on the recording is I went down to Tönsberg and met up with Jürgen, Jürgen Stray, to do some aluminium casting for a coming yes. job. Yes. So granted, aluminium is the pine wood of metals, uh, but in this case, it's the best use for it. Yeah. And I'm, Can... I, I got a build on making the Master Sword from Zelda. Yeah. One of the it looks amazing. Uh, and I mean, the whole aluminum casting thing is really fascinating. Uh, not, not only like just, oh, you make a sand mold, you pour it in, but I mean, bada boom, you're done. But also realizing like, oh, no, you need to account for shrinkage. So 
you need to have a res uh, reservoir of molten aluminium that when it cools in the mold, you can draw upon and keep the whole thing gone, going. Mm. So we, we ended up casting four uh, hilts and guards for the sword. Would the would the three other ones are for? Because uh, one is for me, right? And and so you would have. I'm, three, I'm yeah. sorry to disappoint you, Red, oh, but none of damn. them are for you. Ah, uh, next batch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and this time, make him yeah. aluminum. <laughs> I don't. I don't care. I, I, I don't shiny, get shiny wood. metal. Let's just call it shiny wood. Shiny wood. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know. No. So we we needed a couple of tries to keep it. So we ended up with one perfect one. That was the last casting we did. And the reason it went so well is uh, you're going to dug out one of those isolating feeding tubes, so mm -hmm. the aluminium would stay molten for a good while while being poured, and then in the and then molten inside of that reservoir, mm -hmm. uh, reservoir, and uh, we also tried like without any kind of extra feeding things. And those two we did then, they they were one side was perfect, which was the bottom side, but the top side was shrinking, so it sort of collapsed a bit in on itself, which yeah. is not really good. I mean, one side looks really good, so if you want to just hang it on the wall, yeah, that would work, uh, but not really what we we're after. So I'll take that one. Yeah, well, then you need to talk to Jürgen because uh, I think he said like his kid wanted at least one. Oh, of them. damn. Okay, next batch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll we'll definitely be doing some more casting together. Uh, also because we had the brilliant idea that we would lots of fun to do some to do what Garda did recently, and both casting the Kopesh in bronze and Cyphos and nice. like ancient uh, Mediterranean weaponry and all of that in bronze. Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, but that's a, that's a that's a battle for another day. But one thing, one thing I'm really wanting to do casting off is the br the bronze doorknob from Bag End in Lord of the Rings. Oh, yeah, that'd be real, lots of fun. Just yeah. just to have it in real bronze, instead of like 3D printed thing. Mm -hmm. But sure. that, honestly, that that's that's a brilliant thing about the internet now. Is like I just told Jürgen, hey, I got this weird job. Can you help me out? And he was like five minutes afterwards. Yeah, I downloaded the 3D model of Thingiverse, so <laughs> we're good to go whenever. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah, for for cast making, it's incredible, especially with the detailed resin prints you can do these days. Mm. That's yeah. I think you can get reach a higher level than. Um... Yeah, no, no, he, so he actually um, uh, CNC cut it, uh, the two halves of the shape out of MDF. Yeah. And then, like, clay sanded, clay coated, and painted them so they wouldn't be sticky and all of that. And you got a really nice, clean finish on them. So he did an excellent job on all of that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it just means resin you can like use directly for molding without yeah. like the the whole cleanup procedure. Because I remember with FDM printing stuff, it's just filler primer basically and sanding. Oh my god, so much sanding on that mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Is but, the is the sun that you're using very very important? I think it's a spe specific special the kind of sun, right? E yes and no. I believe it's a special kind of sand, but the really crucial part is that it contains some oil, so that is it will bind to itself again. Okay, mm -hmm. and that's sort of the the thing you use up is that you burn out the oil from the sand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, like, if, if when, you, when you see Garda doing his casting on his YouTube channel, you'll see that all of his sands basically look like brownish yellow, or brownish mm -hmm. orange. Yeah. yeah. And only it goes black around where the casting meets, uh, the molten metal meets the sand. Mm -hmm. In Jürgen's case, because he's been doing so much casting, all of his sand is black. Okay. So he continuously tosses into, like, an old cement mixer mm -hmm. that he modified that breaks up all of the burned lumps and reintroduces some oil to it. Okay. And then you can reuse it again. Okay, nice. that's because that's what uh, was my question. It's like so it can still be used. Oh yeah, it, it, the only problem, I, as far as I understood it, is that you burn the oils out and you need to re-oil it again. Okay. Yeah, that's you. There must be a lot of practice with that because if you look at Gator when he started doing his pours, or at least the ones I watched from a few years back, there were even mm. smaller parts that didn't come out where he had to recast a couple of times. And mm. now he's and he made like the air pocket holes like for the air to escape. And now he's basically just pouring vertically with one in, one out, and they come out yeah. beautifully. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still to practice. And uh, as far as I. I mean, I don't really understand any of this at all. But as far as I got it, mm. uh, you just need to figure out how the metal the aluminium would, would flow. Mm -hmm. And like aluminium has a higher 
surface tension when molten than brass and copper and bronze does. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you need to think differently in how the metal will flow inside of the mold. So he was talking about he was doing some really thin like uh, decorative grates for something, I think. Uh, and he needed then to support the mold at an angle because having it too high up meant that it, 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 the metal was flowing too fast down to the bottom okay. yeah. and didn't fill out widthwise. But if it had it at like a 45 degree angle or something, it, the metal would flow in and spread wide and then downwards as well. Okay. Okay. So like lots of these weird things that you need to figure out. And like we tried before in this case without using any kind of uh, reservoir to store molten metal in so that the mold could draw on that as it cools and sort of keep filling the space, uh, which means that it was shrinking and you had the cavities that was forming. And then we added that in and then it went a lot better. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot of figuring things out and realizing how the metal works. Nice. So you guys made the um, the hilt for it. So what about the blade? Is it going to be forged or is yep, it? Of course. Okay. <laughs> so it's not all going to be just like cast with two different types of metal, but really no no um for my plan is I, I have the hilts now mm-hmm. uh like solid and i will cut them into three pieces so you have the pummel the handle and the guard mm-hmm. then uh i will drill through the handle and i'll tap the pummel yep. and i'll file out the notch the the guard so it, in theory it should fit well and then just screw it all together nice. cool in theory hopefully and I also ah, need to forge okay. the sword, so... <laughs> <laughs> that's the main part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, in theory, that's the easiest bit, because I t- sort of know how it goes. But it's also a long stick of bendy metal that wants to warp when you cool it quickly. So mm, nice. nah. we'll, we'll see how it goes. But, but going, going back for what you explained um, earlier, why we shifted it the recording. So basically, you went socializing instead of socializing with us. <laughs> oh, I'm well, I had a segue. I just again, didn't get. Like to, was... I had a segue. Shut up! I had a segue. I just didn't get to it yet. <laughs> so before 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 you go for the segue, I forgot something. I I want I wanted to tell because I'm super proud of her. Um, you're you're so, pregnant? No, uh, no, oh, <laughs> not okay. that I know of. <laughs> but I would have to check. Um, <laughs> no, I'm I'm super proud of my wife. Um, she went. Uh, she came back from work the other day around 8 30 in the evening so it was friday evening uh and next to the house like one or two kilometers away from the house uh, a guy came uh behind her in a, a polo volkswagen and he was driving pretty fast kind of being crazy on the road, so going left and right, trying to pass her. He couldn't because there was a, a white line. As soon, so he uh, used his, uh, he honked uh, yeah, at well. her, so she she honked back. Uh, <laughs> she, 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 she kind of, she's super cool in life and, and on the road, but when someone is an asshole, she's not afraid to tell her, tell him. Uh, and then, Proud of her for that. Uh, anyway, uh, the guy ended up passing her, and so so she kept going. Five hundred meters later, the guy was had crashed into a car. Oh wow! So he had crashed into a eighteen years old young lady that had oh. a driving driving less license. Uh, one month ago. Oh. Shit. Both car was were totally destroyed. Oh my. What I don't understand is that in France we uh, drive on the right side of the road, right? And so the guy car was on the left in the ditch. In the, in the ditch. What, yeah. Ditch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. And the the girl's uh, car was on the right, totally destroyed. Um, so uh, the reason I'm mentioning it is, first, don't be a dick on the road. Even if you are happy or in a hurry, just don't consider that the road is a playground or that it's yours. Then second reason I'm mentioning it is because my wife stopped, obviously. And she helped the guy, uh, not the guy, the, the guy girl. can, yeah, the girl, the, this guy is an asshole, he can 
yeah. Um, <laughs> she she had the, the young girl uh, talked to her, um, stayed with her, called for an ambulance, the firefighters and the cops. Uh, and then she called me uh, she, I, uh, because she was late. So she told me, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm late because there's an accident. There was an accident just in front of me. I'm taking care of the, the, the girl. And I, I asked her, where are you? And she was like one kilometer away from the house. So I took my car, went there just in case of she was alone. I, I didn't know what the situation was at the time. Mm. So I took my car, went there. Uh, and I ended up just um, helping with traffic uh, in, in one direction and seeing the guy's car just burn and the tires uh, explode oh. and all that jazz. So it was kind of fun and it was like well deserved for this asshole. Uh, turned out that the guy crashed into the lady's car um, and went away, like Randall. walking. Yeah, he didn't run off, so to speak, because he didn't run. He just walked away. Then well, no, maybe, maybe he was in shock. Yeah, he was probably in shock. But yeah. the reason I'm I'm not sure he was totally in shock is he came back. The car was burning, like it was starting to burn. Opened the um, the door, took his backpack, slammed the door, <laughs> and walked away again. What? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he was probably in shock, but I'm not sure. He was probably he, he knew that he has he had, he had done something really bad and, and messed yeah. up. So um, anyway, the car totally burnt. Uh, the cops uh, ask us for a question. I was like, "Boop, I just arrived, so <laughs> I don't know anything." Ask her. So she told about uh, everything that she saw. Um, the firefighter came. The the every, every, yeah everything that should happen in accident happened um and the cop confirmed me when i asked that the guy is gonna be in serious trouble not only mm. for reckless driving but for also the hitting scene, a girl the escaping the scene not helping the girl and and all of all that jazz so we had news yesterday morning from the mother of the young lady uh, she called my wife uh, to tell her that the guy surrender yesterday morning to the cops oh, okay, and good. he actually spent the night in the woods outside uh probably too afraid to come home <laughs> and yeah all of that um so anyway don't be a dick on the road and i'm super proud of my wife just to assist this young lady who was, who was totally in shock she went to the hospital uh she's fine uh she had the um, airbag uh, probably saved her. Mm. Uh, so she had some bruises on the face and and the uh, uh, breathing nose, but but apparently she's fine. So yeah, I'm just happy that she's okay, and I'm super proud of my wife for doing all of that. So yeah. So I actually actually have like complete sidebar to that. Mm -hmm. It is this. And it, it might be the same in both of your countries as well, but in Norway, it's this really big thing that you want to give your old shitty car to the kids when they want to learn to drive. Yeah, same thing here. Don't do that. It's yeah, not a good idea. Yeah, because that's the most unsafe car. Yeah. And like, what do you value most? Your kid's life? Yeah. Or a, like, a hermetic, like a metal box on wheels that hurls down the, uh, the highway on 100-something yeah. kilometers an hour. I mean, like... Which one do you want to stay the safest there? Yeah, but that's to a certain extent and a certain age of the car. But I think as long as it has the um, ABS, like traction control and airbags, uh, it's fine. Like yes there's, and no. There's new cars that have worse crash test ratings than older ones. Oh, yeah, yeah, by all means, by all means. But I, I mean, like, if you compare, uh, it, 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 like, if, if the car is within, like, last... 10 years is probably no difference exactly mm -hmm. it's probably the best it's like, I, I but if use... it's older than that or at least uh, if it's past 20 years then yeah. then there's a high chance like no no it's a year crap. old fiat panda or something like that yeah yeah <laughs> the, the the girls just 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 to confirm what you're saying Raz, the girl's car was a fiat 500 brand yeah. new brand new mm. she she just bought it uh, and just I, I don't know really what I don't really know what happened during the crash, but it was it was gone. The car was completely destroyed, mm. but the girl was fine. Mm. So I really, really believe that with an older car, 
the young lady would have been dead in that that crash. So you're right. If you value your kid's life, invest in a car not that old with airbags and yeah. that's safe because I... statistically in France, young drivers will have three accidents in the first two years. Oh. It's usually small accidents. Like yeah, you, yeah, yeah, that kind of stuff. But if by any chance it's a bigger accident and they are they are injured or they die just because you are uh, greedy about your mm -hmm. money that you don't want to invest in 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 their car, you will never forgive yourself for that. Um, so yeah, people tend so, to do the same thing. We we give the old car to the young because they will crash. So it's it's yeah, it's it's no big deal if it's an old car. But if you value your kid's life, just just buy them a, not not a very expensive one, but a safe one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just, you just will also have no problems in. with fender benders or with yeah. like, um, scratching the wheels on um, sidewalks or anything because with an F one hundred and fifty, you just drive over them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I used I used to drive uh, an old Volvo. It was the same model, same, made the same year as I was, mm -hmm. and I mean basically it was like, <laughs> like a, a, it, it was also an old hearse, so an automatic. So it was like it was a tractor. It was just a slow rolling tank. Yes, exactly. Uh, and, well, Volvos are tanks. Oh yeah, so I mean, I felt really safe in it, and also in the city, I couldn't stress because, like, it was an automatic. So even if I floored it, the, the automatic, and it was so slow, I was just like, Rrr. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it takes about two, two to three seconds for even the car to register that the gas pedal <laughs> was pushed. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I mean, that probably made me a whole lot better driver because I just needed to slow down and sort of be meditative about it. And now in the city, it's like people are honking on me. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm moving. <laughs> but my segue to, yeah. to today's topic was that yesterday there was this open house at Krulov, the, the, the makerspace I'm renting out of. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, which, which is in itself is fine because I was down at the metal shop. I was making a lot of noise and hiding from people. So even though there was tours going about, I could just ignore them. Um, but then they invited me to barbecue afterwards. And I was like, ooh, that sounds great. Do ooh. I need to buy anything? And it's like, no, no, we'll buy. There will be beer. <laughs> and I show up and it's vegan and it's shitty beer. And I was like, <laughs> you know what? Uh, <laughs> I think you sold this on false premises here. <laughs> So did did you go and buy real beer and came back? No, no. It was getting cold and I was getting proper. I mean, I still ate there. It's the food. I, I and I went there for <laughs> seconds. <just> still, food. <laughs> just dinner. Doesn't matter yeah. if it's vegan. <laughs> yeah. And then I went home and then I ate some more. So, but it was it was the whole thing of like, oh yeah, social thing. I can I can manage the, that now, but despite having been surrounded by people all day, because mm -hmm. it's good food and it will be there, maybe good company. Yeah. And then like. No. <laughs> so it was just bad luck, but it could have been something very interesting. Like, oh, yeah. By all means, um, I mean, I, I chatted with the people and they are also running a <laughs> local pub, which it, so it's a fun thing. Um, you heard about Hells Angels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, I think pretty much world over, they have this rival organization called uh, Bandidos. Yes. Yeah. So my makerspace is the old Bandidos headquarters. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, and apparently, when when the, sort of the the leases were transferred and all of that, like they had, they also handed over their old barbecue grill, mm -hmm. which which is kind of shit, but also not all that bad because it's homemade. So it like it it works, but it's uh, sloppy put together. To put it okay. put it that way. Uh, but they also run a pub in what is uh, what they call the old gunpowder factory, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I, I the swing community and uh, the swing dancing to be specific. That's maybe a big difference in English. Uh, they, they have been missing a good place to go dancing like on the regular. So during this uh, barbecue thing, I was talking to some of the managers and bosses and saying like, so here's an actual problem you can help solve. And they were like, yeah, we have a dance floor upstairs. I mean, we can probably figure something out. And they sell beer and all of that. So maybe, nice. maybe hopefully. I mean, they, the the one who's actually in charge of the pub there, he's like, I don't give a shit what people do there as long as they buy beer. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's hopefully maybe dancing and getting hammered afterwards. Yeah. Exactly. Or getting hammered and dancing because that sometimes is interesting. 
<laughs> at least so, to look at. <laughs> nice. But yeah, that, so that that was sort of the segue I had in mind, like sort of going out and meeting people and being social and dealing with things, <clears throat> people, social interactions. <laughs> I mean, Maker Central is coming up, and I think pretty much all of us are more or less introverted. So yeah. too much people are... I mean, not Jan. Jan is weird. Um, <laughs> but sort of the whole thing of dealing with uh, or suddenly dealing with a lot of people especially on the tail end of a pandemic yeah are, are you really, anxious about that that's the real interesting part about it i don't know yes i am anxious but i i, I have no clue how i'm gonna react because i've not been put in that situation yet i mean as i see you jan as someone uh talented for social interaction because not only because of your job but also uh because of who you are like that your your temper is is very open at, at least from from what i know from you so, and, and i kind of envy that um i'm i'm not terrified by mega central i'm anxious yeah mm -hmm. because I'm working all year long alone in my workshop and the uh, only social interaction that I have with people is mainly on the internet with the both of you and, and sometimes in a hangout with um, other people from, from our team, our group. Um, but being um, in the wild with a lot of people, even if you know them, mm. it's completely different with... Um, completely different from what I, I'm, I'm used to as a teacher. Um, when you're in front of a class, there is this, this uh, I don't want to say power, but this hierarchy somehow in a class. Yeah. You are, yeah. you're, you're the teacher, they are the student, they have to listen to you. It's, it's known by everyone that they have to keep quiet as much as they can and you're there to teach so it's not it's there, there is there is a purpose to be in the same room together mm -hmm. it's for me to teach them something for them to learn something so this the role is very established it's not like you are just uh free in a room with other people and you have to interact and and you can do whatever you want um but you also have to respect the social rules of the situation so being in that kind of situation when you uh, when you go outside meet people uh with the same interest as you uh or different ones but you're kind of this uh part of this group of makers that will also meet people that can be makers but they are coming to you for you because you are part of Maker Central, you are part of Make With Makers, we, you are part of uh, uh, Maker Jenga uh, challenge uh, thing that we are all late for. Um, yeah, we don't need to talk more about it. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're not late. I mean, it hasn't happened yet, right? No, sure. We're not late. <laughs> we, 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 we're not late yet. Um, but yeah, there is there is this... Uh, it's not a fear, it, but yeah, an, an anxiety is is a right word, I believe, uh, Raz, because you don't know how uh, it will happen, what's mm. gonna happen. So you, there is all, all, always this fantasy of you uh, uh, going, oh, w w what if that happened? H how will I deal with that? How uh, will the day go? Uh, when I will be there? Will I be? Um, in a safe place or not. I remember going for uh, uh, to make us for the first year, not knowing what to expect. I knew, I mean, two or three people over there uh, that I have, um, maybe a, 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 a little bit more, that I've met in Hanover Maker Fair the first time. But again, when I went to Hanover Maker Fair the first time, I, I didn't know what to expect. I was yeah. just like, the people gonna, are going to meet. I'm not used to that in a social manner. I, I'm used to that for my job, but not like a f free electron, so to speak. Um, so there's always this anxiety of what's going to happen, who would you meet, the excitement of meeting people that you know through the internet, but what, what would happen in real life when you are 
chatting on the internet it's it's only a few minutes it's on uh, at the best a few hours in a hangout or during your podcast recording but spending two days or more with with people is is something completely different i believe yeah, yeah. i it's i think it's going to i i i'm really looking forward to it and i don't feel as anxious as i probably should mm -hmm. because like I have been around a lot of people since then. I mean, with the dancing and with the open house at the maker makerspace now and all of that. Mm -hmm. So that part, and I mean, I also was at Multi's wedding last yeah. year. So there, 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 it's. I think I was more anxious to going over to the wedding, especially with the Corona restrictions and testing yeah. and all of that back then. Now, I mean, even I checked yesterday, and like the UK doesn't have any restrictions. It seems like at all regarding mm -hmm. COVID. The COVID. COVID is the same as a cold, common cold now. Yeah. For them. Which which is a whole different topic. But I mean, yeah. I, I, I don't actually see anything left to be anxious about. Uh, which probably means that I'll get like, like anxiety flash when I show up over there. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, I have I have ordered a whole lot of stickers now, including stickers for us. Yeah. So, uh, I mean... I think I think everything is ready for it. I mean, I, I, oh, that being said, I have a shit ton I would like to get done before we actually head out there. Jenga um, block. Shut up. Jenga <laughs> block. <laughs> yes, yes, I'll get it done. Shut up now. You're um, not ready yet. <laughs> That's no, all but, I'm saying. No, I'm, I'm just not ready take at all. A massive I mean... block of wood and just grind it down to the, to the correct size. If anything else fails. <laughs> And if I have to send it by hand, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, my, my point being just that I, 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 I've almost, I don't, I just started over. I'm not anxious about anything yet, but I expect I will have some kind of reaction to the whole situation when I get over there. Yeah, yeah. I, I believe that uh, I'm, I'm the same. I'm, I'm, I'm not expecting anything. I'm so the, for me the best way to not being disappointed. Uh, in any situation is to not expect anything from a said, the said situation. So I'm going to make a sort of very unprepared, very uh, light uh, in my mind. I'm, I, it's just going to be, we'll see. Uh, I more or less know what I'm going to do during the weekend because I will be with uh, Make With Makers and so I will be helping Jamie um, to do the um, leather um, working things that we are going to do over there. I'm super excited to meet people, to see people that I know over there that, and also people that I don't know yet. And so meet new people. I'm not very anxious, but I know the excitement will hit me on the day that when I will um, arrive at uh, in Birmingham. Uh, I'm not sure it will be anxiety. It's, it's, it can be just excitement. Just, oh, it's finally there. We've been waiting for this event for like two years or so. Um, but, you, you know, there's still this, uh, when you are not used to a situation, it's not, you're not dealing with it uh, on a daily basis. You can have this um, uncertainty of mm. what will happen, how you will react. I mean, and, and we all have different uh, personalities. So uh, some people like to be um, touched and hugged and, and um, yeah. When people that you don't know come to you and talk to you, you can be very open uh, to it and, and super happy that it happens. Some people are not like that. I mean, uh, if someone talks to me in the street, uh, someone that I don't know talk to, talks to me in the street here, uh, my reaction is, is very, um, can be very different depending on how. Very I, French. I, yeah, very very French. Yeah, <laughs> De depending on how I'm 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 uh, talked to. I mean, if it's polite and nice, I, I will react nicely and politely. Uh, if the guy is pretty aggressive and I don't know him and touch comes to me and touch me, oh fuck no, you don't do that. <laughs> but you can still prepare yourself to do to be um, talked that way or touched or hugged when you're going to uh, a big event like Mika Central because you are going willingly. So that that's that that's on you. You have to prepare yourself to go to that kind of meetings. I yeah, believe. I don't know. It's definitely going to be like feelings going to be multiplied when it comes to that or amplified. I think is mm -hmm. the correct term for it. Yeah. Um. I've. I'm not 
overly touchy, but like I've never been afraid mm -hmm. of that, which has changed in the last couple of years because the whole of the just the situation where we're in. Yeah, sure. So um, I guess. I don't try to think too much of it. Like when I first went to Maker Central in 219, I didn't know anyone personally. I went mm -hmm. there by myself. Like you said, it's like my personality was kind of like, well, either I'm going to meet people, or I'm just going to have two interesting days strolling around the exhibition. So yeah. that was for me never even a thought of, oh my God, like anxiety, what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. The whole anxiety now is strictly just because of the Corona times the last two years. But then on the other side, the last two years have prepared me in a way that I am now clearer about what I think and what I want. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm more in tune with myself, one could say. So I'm mm -hmm. trying not to think about it and overly like plan it for Maker Central. I'm going to go in there and then I'm going to just listen basically to myself or how I feel in that situation. And if I'm not feeling comfortable with that many people around, then I'm just gonna take myself a little bit out of the equation. Maybe mm -hmm. don't spend the whole day inside that hall and just take a stroll outside over the NEC or something like that. Mm, yeah. uh, I don't think it's gonna happen, but I don't know. So I'm just gonna play it by ear and see how I'm gonna feel and just react accordingly. I'm more afraid of, because I know which risks I'm taking, I'm more afraid of um, rubbing people the wrong way Mm -hmm. because it doesn't matter how you feel like with other people don't feel the same like you said it's like mm -hmm. you don't know how you're going to react or if you want people to approach you or not so this is going to be it's like learning to socialize all over again yeah with the current with the restrictions we had and like yeah. you said for england they don't exist anymore it's treated as a common cold it's now slowly happening in germany even we have the highest numbers at the moment mm -hmm they are there's more and more like masks are being removed like you don't have to wear them if you're an uh, exhibition anymore they have mm -hmm. normal 3g now you still have to wear them when you do um oh, what do you call it like to ride the bus or the train public transport you still have to wear a mask but in like most areas but then you see a lot of people now wearing them they don't have to but they're still wearing them so there's that whole it's it's gonna take a couple of years at least I, mm -hmm. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing that England decided to say, okay, um, we're going to treat it as a common cold. Because even the people I met that had it now with the vaccine and with the booster and everything, they said, it's like, yeah, it's a nasty cold. It's, it's not mm -hmm. fun. But then mm -hmm. on the other side, it's not that bad either. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we're, I'm just going to play it by ear. Yeah, I think that's the safest bet. I, I, I know with myself that on these events, usually I... I end up getting a bit exhausted by people and just have to go to my room for an hour or two yeah and like i i i know i'll do that i i also sort of don't assume anyone will actually miss me i i guess someone will You're wrong. Me, right? yeah I, I mean i know mean, i know i i get i know that but it's also like that's what i tell myself because that's then, then it's more fine to sort of bugger up for a little bit because no but you're, you're we're gonna scratch and whine in front of your door <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right, Raz. I, I I did exactly the same thing when I went to Mika Central uh, for the first uh, two times, uh, like 19 and 20 or 18 and 19? Uh, 18 and 20, 19 and 19, yeah. Yeah, um, I took I took a break uh, after Mika Central around six or something like that to go to my room, rest for an hour before going back uh, mm. to everyone for the evening uh assuming same thing assuming that i wouldn't be missed and i could just be resting for one hour and just prepare myself to the whole evening and socializing again <clears throat> I, I what i found is i'm not tired of people i'm tired of the noise uh mm. mainly and especially when a, in a big venue like the the one we are uh going for make central this year there is a lot of activity in in this place. There is uh, people forging. There is machines. There is people chatting. There is cars and music and everything. So it's very noisy, and and that's what's wearing me out most of the time. It's, it's the noise, the noise that you can't control. So you, when you're talking to people, you have to talk loud uh, or loudly, and they have to answer loudly. And so just to be able to have a normal conversation is not possible during the day at the venue. It's more possible in the evening at the Hilton bar, 
even though when when there is a lot of people you have to uh, not shout but speak loudly as well because everyone yeah. is excited and and partying so it which is really fun but yeah it's 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 totally normal for me to just take a break to be quiet for a moment and just recharge the battery my social battery before before uh, the evening so i understand yeah and, and it's it's also the whole thing of it it's a lot less overwhelming to be able to bugger off for an hour mm -hmm. and then come back yeah. instead of trying to stay there continuously for a whole day and then be absolutely shattered the next it's, day it's it's the, the directly opposite for me if i would like the last <laughs> time if i would have left for an hour and not just continue staying there and just like ride the wave mm -hmm. I would have mm -hmm. probably crashed in my room because it was everything was new. There was so much to, ta um, to take in, and it just—I was completely overwhelmed by it. I, the second day, I was walking around already like a zombie because I was just like, "There's so much stuff happening." Also, people that I've never met before, where you suddenly—I I didn't have anyone here sharing my hobby. So meeting people there just for like a small talk, and then ending up talking about, um, like for Sylvie, for example. We had a small talk, ended up for talking about two hours, I believe. Yeah. It, it was absolutely incredible. And um, if I would have gone and taken a break in between that, I think then it would have like hit me even more. So I was just like bearing with me. But it's correct what you said, Rasmus. It's like afterwards going back and did what we now call Maker's Blues. But just that mm. it took me a good two days to just process everything um, yeah. there. And I was filming, so rewatching all the, the the videos, I was just that I shot. I was just like, oh man, that that was insane! I can't wait for next year. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> what's the what what's what would be a good way for people to uh, engage conversation with you guys at Mega Central or otherwise? Bring uh, food. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Or just say hello. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Br br bring candy in the van. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, free no, anvil just, son just, of van. Yes, yeah. just come and say hi. I mean, I, I really, I really don't care. I, I love. I'm going there because of the socializing. Yeah, I love to talk to people. I love um, playing with ideas of different. Like, it doesn't matter if you're like a woodworker, blacksmith, and if you have an interesting project or anything you're doing. Like, we can talk about basically anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, none of us are picky about what making, what kind of making we do. We just yeah, have one totally. thing we lean slightly more towards than other things. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's no, I, I'm asking because some some people uh, like to be approached in a certain way. Like, you can come and talk to me, but please don't touch me. Don't talk about my family. I don't want to talk about YouTube when I met Mika Central because everybody's talking about YouTube or, or social media. I just want to have to chat with like real people and, and talk about what's common between us, like our passion and what we are making and all that kind of stuff. So I was wondering if you get, I'm not saying that's my case or yours, but I, I was just curious if there's like some kind of restriction about what things that you want don't want or want to talk about and then don't want to, to talk about no, because that, that that's something i've heard in the past years uh concerning i'm, I'm mainly there to have a good time i'm not big into politics but i'm not even that with like not even with my friends mm -hmm. i'm big into politics so that's that's mm -hmm. just something religion politics is something that i think doesn't belong in a venue like that because oh no yeah so many people from different countries beliefs and the, the nice thing is that what everything puts together is that we all have that making part in common. Yeah. We create stuff and we're being creative. So I think this is a nice baseline would, to have. I would actually go the opposite on. way. I would actually go the opposite way. I mean, I'm not all that fond of discussing politics or religion, but I'm really interested in other people's point of view. Mm -hmm. So if you sort of get the twist of the conversation there, like I don't mind discussing it, but I don't want to argue about it. Yeah. That's a good and, point. And like, yeah, the, the whole reason for people meeting in, in this case is making. Yeah. But we also want to meet people and connect with people and get to know them. And yeah. their beliefs and uh, their ethics is a part of who they are. Uh -huh. So having being able to have a discussion about that and trying to understand where they come from and why they believe what they believe. Oh, I'm I not think saying that's... they should hide who they are or what they believe. No, no, no. I'm just saying. I'm just, I, I don't feel I'm... like having a discussion about it. <clears throat> Yeah, and as I'm just saying, I'm the opposite. I, I would find that interesting because uh, 
it's it, it's just so easy to be stuck in your own little world of how the world is supposed to be and then not realize that oh but in other sides of the world like they need it to be different because everything else around them is so different mm -hmm. to put it vaguely yeah so basically we can talk about anything but just just tr don't argue about it just don't, don't be try a dick. to exactly. yeah don't, don't be a dick yeah <laughs> Don't, don't try to convince people that your beliefs or politics or point of view are, are the best. It's a good place to ex exchange ideas, have mm. fun, uh, meet people, uh, learn how to, uh, to yeah, know them and learn what they like and uh, what's what their life is like. But yeah, you're not convincing anyone in, in during a weekend of... Uh, uh, yeah, makers getting together just to to have fun and exchange ideas. Yep. What about hugs? Are you ready for hugging again? It might take a few cider. <laughs> 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 no, I'm, I'm, I'm actually I'm, I'm quite fine. Like this is something that I have to figure out. I don't know yet. Mm -hmm. This is I yeah. have absolutely no clue. This is gonna be that awkward. Are we gonna fist bump? Are we gonna fist hug? Bump, Are yeah. we gonna shake hands? It's like, oh my god! No, but it can't. I'm gonna I'm, I'm wait a... the first evening at the Hilton Bar after a couple of ciders. Yeah, but after a couple of ciders, everyone will be hugging and. There's there's a reason yeah. why, the, and and the, under those premises, there's the questions like, should we then like not do it at Maker Central because it's gonna happen in the evening? Pretty sure it will. Yeah. There was there was a reason they closed the bars at like the first thing they did was closing the bars when the pandemic struck. Yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. it's gonna be interesting. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I I don't know. I mean, giving complete random strangers a hug is slightly awkward anyway. Yeah, yeah. But apart from that, then, I don't think I'll have a problem with it. Yeah, and then on the other side, Rasmus, you like being awkward, so <laughs> you you kind of feed, you kind of, you, you kind of feed off other people being awkward in your presence. <laughs> well, no, no, I don't feed on it. I I just don't notice it. Oh yeah. Yeah, I. It's like awkward silences and awkward conversation and all that. It just goes way over my head. Yes, yes. <laughs> First time meeting you. Here, have a sticker. Sticker for rectal use only. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, is, is I don't always awkward. think things through. If, that, that, that's, if that's not evident already. No, no, but that's okay because <laughs> awkwardness is only awkward if you make it awkward. I mean, you can... Yeah. You yeah. can you can be silent with people. That's fine. I mean, it, it, there's this quote in Pulp Fiction. I mean, if you are, if you feel comfortable with people, you don't have to talk to the people. Yeah, you know. yes. uh, yeah. In that case, it, it doesn't work because we are going to make a central to meet people and to talk to people in real life uh, compared to what we are doing all year long, just chatting through a screen. But that's fine to be with your friends or people you know and not not be really chatty. I know that um, when I'm in that case, in that kind of situation, I tend to listen a lot and not talk a lot compared to when I'm doing a podcast because that's the purpose of a podcast, just mm. to be chatting. But um, at Mega Central, I can be very quiet for a long time and just watch people and listen to people because I'm interested in. in who they are and what they have to say and i i don't think that talking about me is, is that that interesting but i think for me it's going to be the opposite <laughs> i need people to tell me to, sh to sh shut the hell up <laughs> because for me it is the one chance to like share my hobby that i have which i usually don't have here like it's getting yeah. better now that we have that <laughs> podcast and we talk about it in the hangout and everything but mm. um, before that i was basically alone with my thoughts and the only people i could share it with so that often causes situations where I just start talking and I won't shut up and like not being able to read the room, not being able to like, <laughs> just like I need somebody to send this like, yeah, enough about you. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I think there is also something about the, the, the self-confidence that you have uh, in, in your craft, in your, in your hobby, in what you are doing. Um, you have to, you have to be at some point confident to talk about it and to to understand that people are interested in what you're doing. Yeah, and I and I'm mediocre at most with the most stuff I do. It just I I can get myself excited about it. Uh -huh. it. Doesn't mean that I'm doing a good job with it, but 
but I'm excited about the project and that's where I start sharing it and if people want to listen, listen to it or not yeah. <laughs> it's yeah no I, yeah I, I get it I get it the the um, thinking uh, about the the past maker central what I, or, or the first uh, another maker fair I went to uh, it was very surprising for me that people would be interested in what I was doing and showing in the internet even though I was making video for people to watch I was like, why are, why are you watching my stuff? I mean, doesn't, that's yeah. not super interesting. That's not great. Uh, you can always find people that do it way better than I'm, uh, the way I'm doing it. Um, so I, I had this, not insecurity, but um, I was quite surprised that people would be interested in, in what I was doing. Because I probably didn't understand at the time that the interest is to learn about different craft, about different people, exchange tips about how you do something because it can be applied in a different craft. And and the, the main thing is you, the way you approached, you approach um, what you are doing, um, whether it be leather crafting, woodworking, blacksmithing or, or whatever. So yeah, that's... Doesn't really matter the the number of subscribers that you have. I mean, if you have subscribers, you can still go to Maker Central without having uh, a YouTube channel or being in the exactly. in in the yeah. social. I mean, if as long as you are passionate about something, you like what you are doing, you like what other people are doing, and you you go there to exchange ideas. That's fine. And I I, I guess that's almost like um, a false impression a lot of people can get of to make your community. That yeah. You need to share what you're making to be part of it. Yeah. I was like, no, no, you don't need to at all. You can just be a cheerleader or mm -hmm. make things for yourself and keep it hidden and stored away. Yeah. The, the only thing I would say is that if, if that if you know something, I can help people reach out and offer your advice. Yeah. But I mean, you don't need to share everything you do. Absolutely. Also, one thing I realized when I got there because I didn't know anyone is um, it's of course you see the people on the internet and it's, I wouldn't say it's like TV stars or anything, but it's like, well, I know those people because I watch the videos, but they don't know me or anything about me. How should I talk to them? That was my like, th that was yeah the first okay. half okay. hour I was just walking around. And this is something I learned the hard way is it doesn't matter. <laughs> like we all have. To no, but I have a tip. I have a tip, though. Mm -hmm. If you want to talk to someone you admire, tell them about one specific thing they did that you really liked or appreciated. Mm -hmm. Don't say, I like what you do, because it's too vague and it's too generic, and you, do, you don't sound like you paid attention to what they actually do. Yeah, and they if won't you can believe you. Say, yeah, and, but if you can go up and say, hey, I really like that thing you made, mm. that's very more impactful, and that will make sure that they also remember you better. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I just in generally like don't even care that much if people watch my stuff or not. It's like if somebody just wants to come up and have a talk. No, no, I'm, I'm also saying like if any of us, I mean, uh, we have met Jimmy the Resto before. I'm not th sure he actually remembers me, even though I've chatted with him a couple of times and I met him at both of the Maker Centrals. But I don't expect him to remember me. Red, you have actually been up to into New York and his farm to and mm -hmm. did the thing with Rory May and all of that. Mm -hmm. So it's like he probably recognizes you from afar, but like I don't think he recognizes me. And mm -hmm. the same goes to a lot of these other big people that like, yeah, I have consumed a lot of their content, but I don't think any of them will remember that we have talked about before. Yeah, you'd be surprised because um the first time I met Jimmy uh, was at the first Mega Central outside of the Hilton, and I was like, oh, "It's Jimmy. I mean, it's the guy that I want, I'm watching on YouTube for." It's the Godfather. Yeah, it's the Godfather, and I was like, I had to tell him um, that I admire his work. I admire him for his mentality, and the, oh, I'm not afraid of doing that, even if I have I've never tried it. Uh, and in a way, he literally changed my life because he gave me confidence to make more stuff, even though I, I had no idea what I was doing at the time. So I talked to him at the first Mega Central. Next year, next, next Mega Central, 
uh, I met him. I was like, hey, hey, Jimmy. And he was like, oh, Red, how are you? And he, so he actually remembered me. I was super surprised because we only talked once. Uh, so it was surprising to do that. So I, I don't... Or you I made a really big impression on him. Yeah, no, I'm not sure about that. Um, but, <laughs> what but... is this weird Frenchman? <laughs> oh, he's actually a nice Frenchman. Oh, there's, there's a funny accent. <laughs> <laughs> could be yeah, maybe that. maybe in that <laughs> way <laughs> in that way probably the impression was was big um but no you 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 don't assume that people um don't remember you i personally have a really really bad memory for names if i don't meet people uh multiple times i won't remember uh their names um, but I remember meeting them. I remember their faces most of the time. I remember very clearly at the Second Maker Central meeting someone with his son, and they came to me to show me the one book that they had made. Uh, apparently, they really liked the video that I made for Full Fly with the, the leather book with the gun. Yeah, uh, Shepherd's. Uh, yeah, Shepherd's book. And they enjoyed the video, so they made their own version of it. And I was stunned. It was super, super nice to see them come at me, show me the thing. It was not this ego thing, like, oh, they watched my video, and so they wanted to do the same, so I'm super proud of myself. No, it was super cute to see that this dad and his son was inspired by a video that they saw in the internet and, and made this project together, and that that was something like it's it's a, it's um, a bounding situation, and so just being a witness of that was super uh, super nice. It was heartwarming. I was I was really proud of having done the video, not for the views, but just for these people coming at me and say, "Hey, look, we've we've done that because of you," and it was it was great. So I don't remember the name, uh, their name, but but I remember them very clearly, and and that's one. That was one of my highlights at, at Maker Central mm-hmm. last time. So if you see people that you admire, if you have seen their work, you like their work, don't don't be afraid to to go to them and say, Oh, I've seen that. And I and, and to the point of uh, uh, of um sorry, scratch that. Um Rasmus I had a good point. I like, if you can talk about one specific thing, say I've seen this video. I liked it a lot. Doesn't mean that all the other videos that you've done are shit, and th- that's the only one that's good. It means that that one made a uh, had a um, big impression on me. Mm. So that that that's I believe yeah, uh, Raz, a good way to introduce yourself to people and engage in a conversation. Conversation. It's not like hey, I've seen your videos, okay, uh, <laughs> but what you you enjoyed them or you didn't or did did I say or did something wrong no I like that one that video is 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 great because it inspired me it it taught me something I've I've learned stuff or I like your videography I like your word world I like what you've said I've liked the way you said it I whatever It, it it it's good as a content creator in the other end we have to deal with that and I I I'm not used I'm 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 that's not that I'm not used but I'm I'm shit at uh being complimented when someone comes to me come to me and say oh I I like your stuff I I'm not sure how to react I, I I'm okay thank you but yeah I mean coming down to it that's kind of a funny thing I think that we all have it's just we we do stuff we upload it on the internet and, yeah but in our little world it is just. <laughs> You get so surprised when it actually calls you out on it. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, 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 it's a strange thing because it's like, yes, we should be fully aware that the stuff we're putting out is going to be potentially watched by a lot of people. But then on the other side, I'm still feeling like every video I make, I'm making it for like a small, like the community, like for you guys, for like when yeah. the hangout on the Sundays. is, And now, yeah, I, the, the other day I looked in and I saw that one of my videos has over 10,000 views on it. And I just like... That cool. basically means, and even if it's just shortly clicked, that means a couple of thousand people watch that video. Because I don't think yeah. it's gonna be just five people that rewatch that video a couple thousand times. It's like, oh, that 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 is strange. That feels strange. Yeah, the first I remember the first time one of my videos uh, hit the number of views. Um, 
a high number of views. It was like the, the number of inhabitants in my hometown. I was like stunned. Like all the people, it's, it's like all the people uh, living in my village have seen my video. Mm -hmm. It was like kind of crazy for me. It was like super weird to just, just imagine the number of people watching what I've done in my garage. Um, so yeah, it's, it's weird. What about you, Raz? Are you, are you comfortable people coming to you and say, oh, I like your shit. Yeah. What you've done is great. Yeah, of course. Why I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, uh, I have my opinion of everything I did. But yeah. Um, so, so here's actually a thing, like people just saying, well done. And not people just give me a compliment and not being specific about something. Mm -hmm. I can just say thank you and just shrug it off because it doesn't matter mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. But if you can say it like, oh, I really like what you did there on this piece. Or I really liked how you made that transition there or something like if you can be specific about it. Yeah, the kingdom way more art sword. How does well, it, how how does it feel to be a woodworker? No, how, how does it feel to be a Danish woodworker in Sweden? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, then I will say that your name is John Jonathan Allen. I will punch you. <laughs> no, but um, it's sort of yeah. I don't feel good about thanking compliments, but I can. I'm, I'm no problem discussing my work if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so as soon as you try to be specific about what you're saying about it, then it's a lot easier for me to just say, okay, it's not about me, it's about the work. Yeah, sure. And that's, that's for some reasons, way easier. Um, yeah. yeah, but you're, you're the one doing the work, but yeah, I, I totally get what you're, what you're saying. Yeah, yeah but like, it's uh, just to round all of this off in a vain attempt to at least, uh, it's, to me, it's, um, I don't have any ego connected to anything I make mm -hmm. because in the process of making that thing, I have become better. So it doesn't, it, like five minutes after having done that, it doesn't actually reflect my current abilities anymore. Yeah, I mean, good point. It, good it point. does, but in my mind, I've already moved on from it, so to speak. Because And so if I made something and it's shit, but I'm really, mm -hmm. I can still be really happy about that small detail, that transition there, like yeah. how I got all of got the crisp lines and all that i can be really happy about that yeah. even though the rest of the project turned to shit mm -hmm. yeah if you get what i mean yeah just, yeah, yeah. just focus on the good parts yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> do you want you want to hit it off with your focus <laughs> yes please because i have to set something straight though and and uh, sh shame on dan for not telling me the last time he was on <laughs> um the i said last time that there's gonna be alan at maker central giving uh, one of the courses Mm -hmm. What I completely, mm -hmm. um, what I didn't know at that point was that Dan's wife Janie is doing the booth with her. So my yeah. shout out yeah. goes to her. For, and I'm so sorry for not mentioning it the last time because I, to be honest, didn't know. So uh, yeah, and shame on Dan for not telling me. Yeah, <laughs> shame on Dan. Yeah, he could have said that straight. No, but uh, the, in that case, uh, Janie, who's doing the booth with Alan, yep. and I hope, I really hope it's just the two of them, and I didn't forget anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> I think nice. there will be a couple of others around helping out, but yes. I think those I'm, two is mostly doing the sewing things. Yeah. No. So in, in overall, I should do the shout out for everyone. Like in that, I mean, even including you guys that is helping at the different booth because it, that really makes it makers for makers. Yeah. I'm being a little bit egoistic this time. Like I already told, um, when, when I was asked if I would help, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'd love to help out a little bit, but. I'm going to be a little bit selfish and I also want to enjoy it and walk around and see stuff. Mm -hmm. So don't count me in for the full two days. Yep. Good. Good chat. Uh, mine is the cabin at Lazy Creek. So it's a, it's a Ooh. relatively small YouTube channel that I only found this morning. Uh, so it's a guy making his own cabin all by himself in a place called Lazy Creek. Uh, and the latest video that he, he published uh, two weeks ago, it's a 32 minute uh, long video, is showing the whole process of him building uh, a cabin for a, a full year. Uh, and I really like the the look of the cabin. It's oh, like it that one that that little witch house with the yeah sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched yeah. that completion with the, with the dog sitting outside on the. Bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, yeah there's 
there's a dog. So yeah, it's a good video. The the channel is not that big. It's uh, but I mean it's it's, it's a middle size uh channel, eighteen thousand uh, subscribers, um only. 23 videos with a, a, a few shots in them uh, but yeah the process uh, him showing the whole process of building this cabin in this nice place uh, called lazy creek uh, is is very interesting and the videography is as well um, so yeah that's my focus of the week i i have a focus as well i just want oh. to, i just want to suspense in the air for a second. okay um but you're so for it no, I have it. I found it probably on Monday or Tuesday or something. So Joe Joe Crawford, uh, formerly of the uh, Maybe I Said Too Much podcast, he posted uh, a video, really hilarious video of a YouTube channel called There I Ruined It. Yeah. And the, the video he posted was the North Korean edition of oh, yeah. Always Look on the Bright Side of Life. Yep. Absolutely hilarious. And I think it's someone doing a bit of machine learning, AI stuff, and remixing and reworking old classic, classic quote unquote songs and making the whole new versions of it. So you have the North Korean ver version of May uh, Look at the Bright Side of Life. Mm -hmm. You have the Soviet version of My Heart Will Go On. Yeah, that one and is, is. The great. one I'll link is the best of them all. And it is uh, Hallelujah Heavy Metal version. <laughs> <laughs> nice but i mean you, you death metal version sorry uh but you also have like the oktoberfest version of uh, straight out of compton and oh. uh, and <laughs> and all the like absolutely hilarious things but i'll leave the link for the hallelujah thing and i recommend everyone go look it go look it up because it's the best cool especially if you have like want to see someone ruin music uh in brilliant <laughs> fascinating ways yeah nice. nice oh also i remembered one more thing um, I mentioned it on one, I, I think it was a focus in the really beginning when we started, um, the project camp, mm -hmm. where the, yeah. the um, guy from the Netherlands is building up. Uh, they are back at it. They did a winter break and announced one, and they are starting now, and they now have an editor and uh, somebody who films with them. So, Ooh, they, nice. so whoever wants to... Like start watching it now. Can either watch the old stuff or just like uh, what we did within the last year, and it's kind of like the compacted one, um, a little bit speeding through, but also nicely explained with it. And I think they're just doing a real good job in explaining what they're doing and why they're doing it. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, that that's also worth a watch. Nice, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, my last little bit, like. Uh... Me and Red will be at the Maker to Makers booth at Maker Central now. Mm -hmm. I think they will help out both Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. And I have not got this confirmed yet, but I might be doing a grinding demo with multi tool products. Nice. As nice. well. But I like we talk I talked to John about it and he said yes, that's a good idea. And I never got anything confirmed yet. So it's a bit up in the air and it's less than a week till we're there. So I'm not actually sure, but potentially. Cool. Also, because this is the last episode before we head over, I figured I should mention it. Is it? No, it's not. It's not. Well, it's the last episode that will be out before we go over. Should mm, we record? You're right. That is so, correct. Yeah, that is correct. Damn. I think that. Yeah. I would let the anxiety come on onto you. <laughs> Damn. But yeah. Um, if you want to reach out, you can find us collectively at Two Thirds Focused in any of the mostly social places. And you can find me at Raspus Lewin and Lewin's No, And there will be more classes coming up before the summer at Krulofta in Oslo. If you're including roast maple. And you can find me at theredsmith.com uh, or Redsmith or the Redsmith on all the usual social media. Nerdinvendor.com or Nerdinvendor on the socials. Pretty easy. Well done. Bye bye. Have a good week. Bye, everyone. <laughs>